Good morning. I want to welcome everyone today to our 21 days of prayer. Special welcome to all those online as well. Good to see everyone this morning on this very cold morning, but it is good to be here together. It's warm here and, I, and it's uh, always good to come together as the body of Christ. And uh, I must say uh, it's been a real privilege for uh, Michelle and I uh, to be a part of this 21 days of prayer. It uh, really is a, a time of just refocusing, I believe, and, and just coming together as a body and really seeking God's face. So I really believe in the power of prayer and what God can do. And I really am encouraged to see each, each of you here today in person as well online and to hear the testimonies of what God is doing. It really is so important, I believe, as a church that we start our year like this. It just recenters us in a way that this is what we need to be doing. We're Christ focused and we can only go forward with him. So today uh, we'll be uh, going through what's entitled Daniel's Prayer for His People. And there's just a couple preliminaries there for those that are mainly online, um, just to be uh, a bit conscientious of your camera. As been said before, we've seen, you know, house robes and things that we don't want to see. So just kind of make sure whatever's behind you, especially this time of morning. And our format has been basically a, uh, about a 15 minute devotional. And then after that, we'll pause about for about 30 minutes. There'll be some music and you can pray on your own that way. And then we'll come back together about quarter two and we'll have a corporate time of just sharing. What has God said to you during that time or maybe in the last couple of days or, or whatever that uh, he's leading on your heart? So let's pray as we begin. Father God, I thank you this morning that you are our king. You are the Lord. And you are why we're here this time of the morning for no other reason not to show someone we have discipline or that we can get out of bed. No, Lord, it's so much greater. We have the privilege of coming to your throne today. And I ask, Lord, that you would just move with your mighty spirit in a way that only you can. You know what's on each of our hearts. Lord, you know what's on each of our day. And we just commit it to you now. We ask that you would have your way in all things. In Jesus' name, amen. What difference can I make? You know, sometimes I think we ask that question because we look around and we say, well, man, I, it seems like the whole country say is going in one direction. And I'm just like one person. And what difference can I actually make when there's like millions that are all, you know, on that path? And that just seems the way that things are going. Or other times it just feels, and rightfully so, it's, it's out of my control. Like really, I'm not in a position of power. I'm not the one setting the policies. I'm not the one that actually can make the decisions and, and say the final vote to where it should, well, I think it should go. So if it's out of my control, why bother? And I think another way sometimes we think what difference it can make is when we look at how long it's been some way. You know, it was like that when my dad's and, you know, he told me it was the same way. And it's the same way now. And it's, it's, it just never will change. So why bother? What difference can I make? Well, around 606 B.C., Daniel could have easily fallen into that trap. Daniel was from Jerusalem. And there... Their city was just besieged in their country, and they were taken captive by the Babylonians, and they were literally led as slaves to Babylonia. And um, when they went there, they were the group of them were actually selected to serve in the king's court. And you know, it's easy sometimes just to pick up the book and to read it, but really put yourself into Daniel's shoes. You know. There's no transportation like we have today. There's no cars. They walked all that distance, right? They were taken probably with chains and lead and many, many days to get to Babylon. Knowing what they just saw, their homes were destroyed. Their families were decimated. And their their whole culture was really crushed. Like they decimated that, that uh, temple. They'd taken all the articles out of it. They made fun of God. They, were, they thought it was just a great plunder. And they took everything with them, all the gold and all the silver and everything that was of any value. And these few people that they selected, they had them taken now all the way to this foreign land. And here he is. He's a, he's a foreigner in a strange land. And not only that, he's actually a slave. Like what future could he possibly have as a slave? What difference, you know, could he make? 
what difference can you and I make in our world? If you would turn with me to Daniel chapter 9, we're going to begin reading the verse 2 this morning, and Daniel is found in the Old Testament, so if you kind of go halfway through your Bible, you'll find Psalms, and keep going a little bit further, and you'll find the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 2, or sorry, Daniel chapter 9, beginning at verse 2. And it reads, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood from scriptures, according to the word of the Lord given to Jeremiah the prophet, that the desolation of Jerusalem would last 70 years. So I turned to the Lord God and pleaded with him in prayer and petition, in fasting and in sackcloth and ashes. I prayed to the Lord my God and confessed, Lord, the great and awesome God who keeps his covenant of love with those who love him and keep his commandments. We have sinned and done wrong. We have been wicked and rebelled. We have turned away from your commands and laws. We have not listened to your servants, the prophets, who swore we your name to our kings, our princes, and their ancestors, to all the people of the land. And Daniel chose to show his God on the way, praying not his country. country. There's some there's some points points that that kind of come out come out when it does this this text this tax, tax. We're really we're really saying really these things. Daniel knew his scriptures. We understand that something. And I think that's the thing that's important too. To you know that phrase that we need to always be students of the word. Students, it doesn't matter what age you're at. You have to be active and learning, and you're not too young to start. Really, in school, it's the best time to start when you're younger because it becomes a discipline that you'll take with you through your life. And it's being in that word that helps us to see what God is trying to say to us. God uses his word in so many practical ways and just allowing us to know more of him. Daniel turned to the Lord. You know, it's interesting. He made a choice. And really, he could have just said, you know what? What's the point of all this? I'm in this foreign place. I'm in the king's court. I actually got it pretty good compared to some of my friends. You know, they might have been, who knows what happened to them. But here I am. I got everything I need. And they're doing pretty good here. And it looks like we got conquered back there. And why bother? But instead, he didn't. He chose the Lord. And we have that same choice. Who are we going to put our trust in each day? And then it goes on to say he pleaded in prayer and petition. And when I read that, I, I envision in my mind that the battle is actually being moved from a physical battle where he's like, I'm going to be out of slavery. I'm going to fight this thing. And he's taking it to the spiritual realm. And that's a whole different arena where the battle's done. And very clearly, it teaches us that in Scripture that uh, the battle belongs to the Lord. And it's not Daniel's fight to fight in the sense of God will fight for us. And then it says that his posture was humble through fasting and in sackcloth and ashes. And we don't really do that this in our day today, but literally it was symbolic and very dramatic that you would see someone sitting there, usually sitting, and they'd be in a pile of ashes. And sometimes they would they would rip their clothes or pull their hair out and try to just express this, what's going on in their heart of how remorse they are. And, you know, I, I just think it kind of makes us think a little bit to pause this morning that you do realize we're going to the throne room of God when we pray. And I know we, we use the expression because we, and rightfully so, that Jesus says, I am a friend, I'm, you know, and we think of Jesus as a friend. But when Jesus taught us to pray, he very clearly said, our Father art in heaven, hallowed be your name. There's always a respect for the presence of God. Always. And the interesting thing with Daniel, when he begins, he actually says, I'm a part of the problem. Wow. Like I'm, I'm like the king justifier. So this is like really tough when I read that because, you know, he could have said, you know, it's everyone else's problem, not my problem that we're here. Like, I'm not the guy that did this, and I wasn't the king that made all these bad choices. I didn't lead my people into this path where we were worshiping all these fake things. I, He didn't. He said he took ownership of it. In fact, 
probably have the, I think it's four times. I think in my notes I had three, but there's four times he says, we, 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 we. And I think sometimes in our culture today too, we can do that. We can just kind of say, well, I was raised this way. I had, you know, and man, we all have stories. I mean, we all have stories and they're real stories. I'm not downplaying our stories, but they don't really give us the reason to say it's their fault. That <laughs> We have to take ownership and it's not an easy thing to do. But it's important because I think when we take ownership, it puts us in the right position again before who we're going to. We're going to Almighty God. It's about him. Right? It's about him. And the other little last point that I had here was that uh, I found it interesting. He knew from scriptures because he had read Jeremiah. They had 70 years to go. And I don't know exactly what point in time he was doing this prayer, but he was probably doing the math. He probably knew when they were done. <laughs> And yet he still prayed it in such a passionate way. And sometimes, you know, I can feel as a Christian saying, well, why should I pray if God already knows the answer anyway? Right. And there's a good example from the Old Testament where he definitely knew the answer. He had it in writing and he actually quotes it like, yeah, I know the time of captivity is going to be done. And yet he still prays as earnest and as hard as he can about what God's will would be done to help release them. And I think it's the same for us today because there are times when we just need to be obedient and maybe we need to go back and say, Lord, still need that touch or Lord, I still need you to move in this way. I still need to do what only you can do. I know I've asked before. I know I've asked maybe years, maybe I've asked for decades. And I know some of you in this room have asked for decades for things. And it's, it's not easy. It's hard when God you know, he sometimes says yes, sometimes says no, sometimes says wait. The waiting is really rough, especially when it's a long, long time. And unfortunately, in my lifetime, I've had a few that I, the way it looks today, they won't be resolved in my lifetime. There's been too much happened in, the, in my brain. If it was going to happen, it would have happened about six years ago and it didn't. And those are places where I believe our prayers can make a difference. We're going to take a few minutes. I'm going to just uh, close this part in prayer, and then I'm going to invite you to go off and pray. And I want to encourage you. Your prayers can make a difference today. Part of our posture is being here and being online and making this a commitment. That's huge. It is. There's a whole lot going on in our world today all over. There's lots of things that are just, you know, demanding our attention. And yet we've chosen today to come here in a posture of prayer. And that honors what God, uh, our God, it really does. And it makes a difference, too, of what our community sees when they hear about a church that's praying. Wow, churches still pray? Oh, yeah, you better believe it. Right? It's important. Let me pray. Father God, as we go now on our own, I thank you, Lord, that your spirit is alive and well. I thank you, Lord, that you know our words that are going to come out of our tongues before they're said. And you're good with that. I thank you, God, that... Uh, even when it's tough, and it seems like things have been that way so many years and for so long, that you are faithful, that we can trust you, Lord, no matter what the circumstances are or what the outcomes are. You are God. You are our Lord. You are our King. So speak to us now, Lord, as we pray, and may we just bring glory to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So again, we'll just take a few minutes here to about quarter two and I'll call you back and then we'll have a time of sharing. Thank you.